I thought that was jazz. And then when I met Wynton Marcellus for the first time in 10th grade, he came to my high school and we were playing a song with him. I was in the big band and, and my song got chosen um, as the one that Wynton wanted to play. And what do you mean your song? A song that you had written? Because there were two drummers in the band, two or three drummers in the band. And so, in, in, you know, and two or three drummers, off. yeah, we had our songs that we played. I think mine was Night in Tunisia or something like that. And, you know, went and wanted to play Night in Tunisia. And I'm playing. And what I'm playing is like a beat that I had heard on the jazz radio station, which was actually played like fusion, you right, know. Right, and, right. Like, and so I'm playing like this kind of pseudo funk beat behind. Uh -huh. him, and went and turns around, you know, in front of the, the, the whole school, like almost like the, we did an assembly. And he turns around, he's like, man, what are you playing? And I'm like, man, I'm playing. I'm playing the groove. He's like, man, that's not the groove. He said, have you ever heard of Art Blakey? And I kind of, yeah, heard of Art Blakey a little bit. And, um, and I was like, yeah, a little bit. He's like, well, play me something that Art Blakey would play. And I was just like, well, I can't do that because I, I haven't studied out. So Winton takes the drumsticks from me in front of like, you know, hundreds of students. He takes the sticks, sits down behind the drum set. And you know he's not a drummer, but he plays something right, that, shows you the yeah, vibe. Yeah, he knew. He, and oh, I was it's just so like, uncomfortable as you're telling me this. I was completely. This. <laughs> I was embarrassed and like you know a trumpet player, and it's in front of all my friends, and everybody's like, oh, right. you know, like he's showing you up. But at the same time, I was like, man, it's incredible that this guy plays trumpet and he can play something on the drums that I can't. Right. And so I was like, well, how could that be? So. You know, after the the embarrassing moment, after that, I went and talked to him on the on the side. I was like, "Man, how do I learn how to do what you're doing?" And he was just like, "Man, you gotta." He gave me a whole list of drummers and people to to check to out. To. And that was kind of my path from that point because I respected him. He was in de in town playing with the Detroit Symphony Orchestra, but then on another night he played his jazz quartet. Right. So he was doing both, and that was the first time I ever seen, you know anyone, let alone an African-American, would suit, dress well, spoke very, you know, like, elegantly and, and uh, you know, just everything, the whole package. I was like, man, I want to be like that guy. Yeah. And so from that point, from 10th grade, I made him my, my just mentor, you know. Every time he came to town, I would be in touch with him. And I remember talking kind of, about that with you yeah. Yeah, a couple of years ago. And so he, yeah. you know, he, he stayed up with you, or you he stayed did. up with him, yeah. and he, he was yeah. receptive. He, and, yeah. You know, every time he came to town, I made sure that I go to, to the show. I made sure I got some advice. But he was the type of, he is the type of guy that uh, I think he had tough love growing up. Like, either you want to do it or you don't want to do it, you know? And so that's how he taught me, you know? Um, and friends of mine were like, you know, why do you go to his concerts if he's like always telling you what you can't play or what you, you know, like how bad you are. But I knew it was something there that I was supposed to get. I think you can't learn something until you're humbled by it. And, and then once you just let that go, then you can start to soak in all of the stuff that you're supposed to learn. Mm -hmm.